All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you my take on the radius gauge. To do this drawing, I'm going to use subtractive and additive techniques. So let's discuss that just quickly. I'll change uh, to color because that helps with the description. I'm going to first of all draw a block which represents this green section of the radius gauge. I will then subtract from that the red slot as well as this little stepped feature in here. So that will be subtractive method. I'll then use the additive method or add to the, the object this orange flange. Okay, so I've already started with a uh, block that is 102 by 78 across uh, the back here. My apologies, 76 across the back here. All right, and I've dimensioned that in SketchUp. I'm now going to pull it up to a height of 52 as indicated there. All right, so let's switch back and have a look at that. So here you see the block, and I've drawn that in 76 by 102, and I've used the push and pull tool to pull it up to a height of 52. But I might just, I'll repeat that so you get to see that again. Um, I'll bring it back down to the ground line there, and I can see that I've come down 52 millimeters. I'm viewing that in the bottom right-hand corner of the window. You can see it's 52 millimeters down, and as I bring it back up to zero, where I started, I know that I've got 52. I can confirm that just for you by putting a dimension there like that, which shows me it's 52. All right, so the next thing I want to do is to draw a center line that runs down the middle of the long axis of the object. All right, so I'm going to use the tape measure and on the edge, click, and then I'm going to hover over the midpoint here, which gives me 38 mils. That's my center line, okay, that runs across the top of the object. And then I think I might put a vertical center line in as well. So I'm going to bring that across to there like that. So I've got this center line that goes across both of those faces. All right, let's take a look at the detail on the drawing. I can see here at the bottom, I've got a distance of 14 and that the total distance across there is 48. So let's put some guidelines in to handle that. So on this face at the front, I'm going to come across 14 mils and press enter. Type it in, one, four, enter. And then I could do the 48. In fact, why not do that? Four, eight, and enter. I should be left, if it is symmetrical, with a distance here of 14. Yes, it is. So that tells me that this is 14 as well, as that one being 14. Okay. I'll subdivide it now. 26 millimeters down like that. So let's subdivide that. I'll put another guideline in from the top edge coming down 26 like that. All right, so we've marked in that 26 there as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle and push that feature back. Okay. I'm going to subdivide that as well, so I'll show you what I mean. All right, so a rectangle. One there, and that's what I mean by subdividing it, and another there. Because the top one, I want to push back 28, and on the bottom one, I want to push it in 14. So let's take a look at that. All right, so push and pull. 
this one's going back in a distance of 28. So I'll type 28 in, press enter. This one's going back a distance of 14. Type it in, press enter. I might do a little clean up here of that line. There'll be one on the other side. There it is there, get rid of it. And I might clean up the guidelines because I know some people don't like them, they get confusing. So let's get rid of all those guidelines. Uh, now what we've got is that front section drawn. Okay, now I need the guideline at the top again that runs down the middle. So let's put him back in. And then what we're interested in doing now is this slot. Okay, now I can see here that it has a radius of 12. In other words, from the middle of the circular feature there out to the edge is 12. So the entire slot is 24 mils across. I'm going to put some guidelines in to help draw this. Okay, so let's first of all describe the width on our drawing. So tape measure from our guideline. Let's come across 12, put that in. Type in 12, press enter. I'm going 12 to the other side as well. 12 on the keyboard and press enter. So there's the width of our slot defined in there. Okay. The next thing I want to do is describe this detail. We've got a dimension here of 20, which is going to give us that center. And we've got a further 30 millimeters along, which will give us the other center up here. So let's put some guidelines in to define that detail. Tape measure. Come along 20, 20 on the keyboard, press enter. And then from there, we had another 30 mils. So 30 on my keyboard, press enter. So we have some useful information or some useful guidelines there. These are the centers right here for the circles. And we have the edges of the slot. So let's put them in. So we want to draw uh, circles. So we'll go to the circle tool, put it on the center there, bring it over to the guideline like that. There's one, the other one, like so. We'll use our line tool now to connect these points at the nine o'clock position, if you like, and on the three o'clock position on the watch or the clock face, we'll join those ones. I'm going to use the eraser, erase that half, erase that half, and then we've got our profile for our slot now. And we can see that it's 12 millimeters deep. All right, so we'll grab our push and pull tool, and we can now pull that to a depth. Keyboard entry of 12. That didn't work. Try again, 12, enter. There we go. All right, now I'm going to delete guides and then we'll zoom out just a little bit and we'll take a look at our drawing. And we're almost there. So what we've got to add now is just the orange flange out to the side here. All right, we can see there's a distance of 26, which means that these are going to be a radius of 26 as well. All right, so let's have a look at how we could do that. There's, again, there's a number of methods for doing it. Um, this is one that I think will be easiest for us. So we'll start with adding a rectangle and pulling that out and then we'll, we'll maybe um, draw the circles on there and then pull it up into thickness. We're not given the thickness here, so we'll have to calculate it. We know that this distance is 26. All right, so that happens to be half of 52. So that should be nice and easy because we can use a midpoint snap there to do it. All right, so here we go. 26 should be the number to remember. We'll draw a rectangle. 
um, sorry, on this one, there we go. On the bottom, on the ground here, and we're going to come out on the blue axis like that. It's 102, 26, like that. Okay. And then we can put our circle there now to do this curve. Okay, so let's take a look. Now there's two ways we could do this fairly quickly. We could draw a circle on here, pull that out. Alright, but you'll notice we're going to have to move the circle later, which is kind of getting a bit messy. Alright, so there's another tool we can use, which is this one. It's an arc tool. Now, there's a number of options here with the arc tool. We can put an arc um, around a point, right, or on align it to a face, and that sort of thing. So there's lots of different options here. This one, I think, will be the easiest one because we do a starting point, an ending point, and a radius. All right, so let's take a look at how a couple of these work. So here we go. Um, we want the arc tool. Right. All right, so let's put a center for this in. I want to measure along this line 26 mils. So I'll click on the tape measure. I'm going to type in 26, press enter. Now you won't see much happen at all, but if you look closely, there's not a guideline there, but there is a tiny little dot there, which gives us our 26 center. While we're at it, we'll put the other center on the back here. So two, six, and then enter on the keyboard, and then we have the centers defined. All right, so here we go. Click on the tool. I'm going to use this one. Click on the center. Now I am using that one because I want it um, to use the center and then a point and then an, uh, an ending point. One thing to note, you don't want the green compass. You want the blue compass. So make sure you move in from this face slowly and then make sure it's still blue and then click Click the end point here and then we can pull that curve around now till an angle of 90 degrees or the green axis. Drop it there like that. Okay, so the same thing again. Make sure you have the blue compass. Click on the end point and then pull around until you get the green axis like that. Alright, now a little bit of clean up. Clean off those two lines there and we'll clean off these two lines here as well. They can go so that you've just got that left. Okay, we're pulling this up to a height of 26 or in other words to the midpoint on this edge which is there. Okay, now I'll just zoom out so we get a little bit of a better view. All right similar to the one that we've got on our drawing. And there is our completed drawing of the radius gauge. Okay, pause, rewind, do what you need to do. Um, I hope the videos are helping and I'll see you guys next time.